Hey friends, Dean here. Before we get you on to your episode, I want to take a moment to invite you to our next virtual online trivia night. Wednesday, May 13th at 8 p.m. Join us either on our Facebook group or on our YouTube page for three rounds of fun trivia, music questions, movie questions, general knowledge questions. It'll be a fun time and a chance to win some prizes and have just a good relaxing night uh, of some trivia at, at home. You don't even have to go out for it. So don't forget, Wednesday, March 13th at 8 p.m., Join us on our Facebook group or YouTube for three rounds of fun virtual online trivia. We'll see you there. In 1984, they were all but washed up in the United States. A year later, they would give what has widely become known as one of the best live performances ever in front of a worldwide audience. In this episode, we are checking in with Queen and their 1984 album, The Works. Stay with us. Get ready for the 3324 podcast, where lifelong friends Dean Legiro and Eric Coover share their love of all things music and movies. Dean has directed short films and is a music trivia buff. And Eric, trained in audio engineering, brings his extensive knowledge of music and film to the conversation as they discuss, debate, and celebrate their favorite albums, films, and much more. Welcome to the 3324 podcast. If you are new, we appreciate you checking us out. And if you're returning, welcome back. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider, all that stuff. You know that if you're listening, what we want to talk about is social media. We are very active on Instagram and Facebook. So if you would give us a follow uh, at 3324 podcast, you're already listening. So you may as well get the whole social media experience, right, Eric? That's right. It's, it's not the same. You need the whole thing. You do, right? You don't eat a sandwich yeah. without the top piece of bread, do you? <laughs> no, you don't. Unless it's an no, open face need... sandwich, but this is not an open face podcast. This you need the whole thing. Well, you need you need the dressing, you need the, you know, the lettuce, the tomato, all of it. Yeah, so and that, yeah, that's what Instagram not? and Facebook. Instagram that's and right. Facebook is like the the lettuce and the tomato. There you go. So you're you're here at the sandwich. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> you're with Dean <laughs> and, and Eric, how you doing? I'm good, yourself, sir. I'm doing well. Mm. So in this episode, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about Queen, yeah, uh, their, their 1984 album, The Works. Mm. Um, and be before we, we'll, we'll get into it, but let's do the stats like we always do. We'll start straight off. Uh, this was released in February of 1984. It was produced by Queen and Mac, okay? And Mac is, is Reinhard Mac, and his, he's more mm -hmm. commonly known as Mac. Interestingly enough, Mac was the producer for Queen, but he was the engineer for every ELO album, starting with Face the Music, up until Balance of Power, with the exception of Secret Messages. So he was the engineer for the Electrical Light Orchestra, but not the producer. Hmm. Number Hit number 23 on the US charts, certified gold. It only sold 500,000 copies in the United States. This, this was actually a, quite a disappointing album at the time. Um, would eventually sell over 6 million worldwide. worldwide. There were four mm -hmm. singles released from this album. Radio Gaga, I Want to Break Free, It's a Hard Life, Hammer to Fall. Yeah, this was not, as far as the United States goes, Queen had kind of, the, the ship had already sailed. They were on the other side of, of their career. This is pre-Live Aid because of their previous album. So let's talk about the previous album. Let's talk a mm -hmm. little bit about Queen, and then we'll get into our connection to, to this album. All right. So Queen, uh, their first album was, was in 1973. They had formed in 71. John Deacon on bass, Brian Mann guitar, Roger Taylor on drums, Freddie Mercury on vocals. Mm -hmm. And piano. And piano. And pi can't, hit, can't forget the piano. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Not no. They, <laughs> they they did have a number one. They had one number one album, and they only had two number one singles, and it was all from one release. They hit the number number one in the United States with their album "The Game," mm -hmm. which was which came out in 1980, and that spawned two number one hits: "Another One Bites the Dust" and "Crazy Little Thing Called Love." Mm. After that, after that number one album, they would do something that really. <laughs> was a lot of head scratching going on is their follow-up release was an album called hot space uh not including flash gordon soundtrack mm -hmm. which came out in the same year it came out in 1980 which was really a, a 
a soundtrack proper for the most part. And then their, their next regular album would be Hot Space, which was very much a dance album. With the exception yeah. of the single Under Pressure, which was tacked on to that album, wasn't really a part of the the Hot yeah, Space doesn't, concept. Mm -hmm. Doesn't quite fit um, that track. Yeah. The one with Bowie, you know, Under Pressure. But yeah. yeah. And, and if you remember at the time, I mean, everybody talks about Under Pressure now. And it's it's such a, a treasured song. Back then, it it didn't do much in America. It did well overseas, mm -hmm. but it was kind of an oddity. It was just a, a song that kind of came out and, and didn't do anything. But now, it, it's a classic Bowie slash Queen track. It's huge now. Um, it was an I I, I kind of thought of it as a it was a, definitely an FM staple yeah. back in the day, but it certainly wasn't like a a big selling hit. You know, in terms of like you didn't hear it. But like, you know, all our favorite rock stations at the time were playing it. They were playing a lot of their, you know, a lot of this kind of stuff. Yeah. Stuff from Hot Space, not so much. <laughs> yeah. Very, yeah I, don't very think, much I, don't, I don't think anybody knew what to do with it, honestly. You know, well, it, it they, I think they did know what to do with it, tra throw it in the trash because <laughs> it was, it was really, it, 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 they, they had a number one album. Their next album, Hot Space, stalls at number 22. And yeah. it was this this disco-y thing, but by 82, disco had kind of ridden into the sunset for the most part. So there were I would say they were kind of a little late to the game with this kind of a this kind of a concept to say, oh, let's mm -hmm. let's get into the whole dance thing. By 82, that that had run its course, I felt. Yeah. Well, there were a couple of tracks off the game that were sort of steering towards that sort of Another one you know, bites dance, the dust. Yeah, danceable beat kind of thing, Funk. and that of course, and of course that you know that song would be used by DJs from you know forever. You know, another one by they're always using that yeah. that beat and, and everything else. But so I, I suspect that that's why they kind of steered in that direction. But yeah, it was largely. Make, I mean, it was largely Freddie Mercury that yeah was was yeah. pushing towards this. There there was no virtually no guitars on this. It was very mm -hmm. synth driven. Very. Yeah. Uh, very beat driven, very, uh, you know, kind of bass, uh, synth bass driven as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, no, no guitars on it. And it's just really, but, <laughs> not, but not then you have something like Under point. Pressure on it, which doesn't fit, but they tacked it on at the end because that, that was a single. And that was very much spontaneous. Bowie happened to drop by the studio where Queen was recording. And then they just kind of worked up this song, mm -hmm. uh, which would become, <sighs> become a classic. Yeah. But you're, you're right about the game. There, there was some... Some some kind of hints of what was to come with another one bites the dust dragon attack yeah love that one from yep. from the game ha, has that mm -hmm. kind of funk mm -hmm. and that you know that different feel to it outside of of the rock stuff that was on the album and then uh, they they put out hot space and it really it just takes a dive and and as far as the United States goes that that actually sealed their fate strangely enough you wouldn't believe it but Queen was pretty much done. The, the Works comes out, which is a superior album in every way, mm. times 10. Mm -hmm. It actually doesn't do as well. It hits number 23 on the charts instead of number 22. Yeah. And it was one of those things where there's a, a couple of other things that were going on too, which we'll get into later about this album and then about Queen's perception of the United States. Uh, they, ended up, they ended up not touring. after 1982 was their last tour in the United States. So they had vir virtually turned their back on the U.S. because they felt that U.S. audiences had turned their back on them and that they really weren't interested anymore. But but still a worldwide phenomenon. They would go everywhere else and sell out like crazy. But for for United States, it just seemed that they had kind of and an, uh, cool. And an them. album like Hot Space would do well in Europe. You know, it would it would be prefer. You know, that's the kind of thing that people in Europe would be listening to. Still, you know, that kind of club that you, you can just go to all those clubs and like probably like the Netherlands or, you know, all these, you know, you hear about all yeah. these like hot dance clubs in Europe. And I'm sure that that's, that album was probably yeah. more popular well, there. Pretty much everywhere you know, so. it, across the world. <clears throat> yeah. Except for the United Na uh, United Nations, except for the United <laughs> States. It was, it was a top 10 album. Number one, number six, uh, number seven in France, five in Germany. Mm -hmm. So you're right. It, yeah. Worldwide. Hot Space, as quirky and as strange as it was, was still a hit. But in the United States, it 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 was it was pretty much that 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 kind of sealed it for uh, for mm -hmm. Queen. So then they would go back into the studio, work with with Mac again, 
and come out in February of 1984 with The Works, which mm -hmm. for me is my favorite Queen album. I, I know that you were uh, obsessed with this record when it first came out. You were, I mean, you, 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 you played it for me. I remember I was kind of like, yeah, I, I loved the game. I had the game. Yep. Obviously I didn't have hot space, but uh, I did have the flash Gordon soundtrack though. That was actually yeah, the very so first I. piece of vinyl that I ever bought myself with my own money that I yeah. actually spent because I loved the movie and I just felt that their, their input to that film, just put the film way over the top for me. It was such a, it's such a, so, it's so bad, it, it, but it's so good. But the music is what really brought it to that level that I, it's, it's one of my favorite cult films of all time. So yeah, I, I and I would play that all the time. I was always, mm -hmm. I mean, and it's really not much. There's only like maybe like two songs off the record, really. I mean, there's, you know, yeah, most of it was like flesh. incidental style. Right. It music was a lot of, it, yeah, it was, it was, score. It was yeah. they were doing a lot of score on it. Yeah. You know, even Freddie was like the vocals on it were, were part of the score. It was, mm -hmm. it was crazy, but, uh, but yeah, I was obsessed with that album for some, you know, just cause it yeah, was a and, piece and, of the movie because it had like the dialogue, which would, which would be used much later. Like, you know, Quentin Tarantino would always use it in his you know soundtracks where you, you actually got the dialogue from the film. Yep. And then you'd hear the music kick in and that kind of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. And I remember seeing so that, that in the theater, fun. Flash Gordon. And, yeah. and when that, yep. the movie started and you get Flash's theme in the beginning, it, yeah. it's, I remember having like the hairs on the back of my neck were standing mm -hmm. on it. It was like, this is, it was no, it certainly was no Star Wars, but no. when you're, when you're that no. age, it didn't need to be. Uh, it, it delivered no, it's on exactly what we'll it get, needed we'll to get, be. We're, we're already yeah. going off into Flash Gordon territory, so we're going to veer <laughs> off. Let's get back. Let's get back to the work. We, Flash Gordon is on the horizon. We will absolutely do a Flash Gordon episode. But the yeah, the, so the works came out in in eighty four. Uh, I remember, yeah, this wasn't played on the radio. I mean, if it hit number twenty three, you weren't really hearing this stuff. This was really yeah. a creature of of MTV. At least my exposure exactly was yeah. was the was this <clears throat> was the single radio Gaga, which is a very strange title and so i don't think that i think the, the deck was maybe a little stacked against queen mm -hmm. because of the quirky quirky lead single it, it it still had some trappings it it doesn't sound like hot space but on the surface you might think well what is this is kind of dancey it's kind of you know weird yeah um but it, but it wasn't like that at all and then i just i got the album they also came out with a i think it was called a video LP or something. And it was all the videos from this album. So I was watching the videos just on the cassette tape. It was just like the the five, four or five singles. And then I was just listening to the album and just really, yeah. really deep diving and, and falling in love with, with Freddie Mercury's voice on this album, mm -hmm. falling in love with the songs. Uh, and like you said, listening to it again, uh, I picked up, I picked up on some other stuff, which we'll get to. Yeah. I mean, so. uh we get to uh, Radio Gaga, just speaking about, I mean, it's almost like Queen were like, I kind of view that song as it, it is kind of, some of the lyrics are very silly, but it's almost like that the song is ironically talking about the very thing. I mean, they're, they're not being played on the radio They're yeah. you know, it's radio is going away because, you know, this is the MTV era now. So it's, it speaks to that. Yeah, it's so, almost you a know, response to yeah, exactly. Video killed the radio star. It's almost like a response yeah. song yeah. Where, where the Buggles were saying the radio star doesn't exist anymore, and mm -hmm. Radio Gaga saying you, you, you've yet to have your finest hour. Yeah, radio. So, so it was kind of a, a little yeah. more of a a, a a positive outlook on it, or just kind of uh, and, and couched in this weird beat and this weird bubbling synthesizer mm -hmm. kind of loop that they were using so it, it to start off the album like that uh it's not an indication of what the rest of the album is though so that's that's kind of the the great thing about this album is there's so many different things in here going on yeah that there's probably something for everybody and then you'll hopefully end up just loving everything because i yeah. loved it all it was just this was one of the first cds i bought by the way when when cds first started coming out yeah I, this I think this one and there was like an uh, ACDC who made who mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot out when CDs first came out. So you kind of had slim pickings and I was by, by no means a, a huge ACDC fan, but I wanted to start getting stuff mm -hmm. and the works was available. Absolutely picked it up and devoured it. I had it on cassette. It's uh, a great, and, great and then, one to start yeah, with. 
<laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> ACDC, who made who, which is like yeah. their greatest hits. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Radio Gaga, and and I, I think we need to say it. If if people didn't know, this is where Lady Gaga got her name. Really? Yeah. I I didn't from know this that. song. Yep. Absolutely. I had her boyfriend. I, I had no idea. <clears throat> wow. Her that's boyfriend great. at the time is there's the Queen connection suggested. Um, Lady Gaga based on on this song Radio Gaga. Hmm. See that? Dropping I'm dropping well, knowledge. You know, well, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I remember I, I, I'm sorry. I, the, the, going back to uh, you can't help alone when you watch this video uh of, of it, you know, they 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 do this you can't help but think of Flash Gordon, though, right? You know, there's, well, there's of the still, Metropolis you know, footage, and, exactly the, that sci-fi thing going on. So there's a little bit of ship. that creeping in there. Yeah, yeah they're yeah. Just, they're they're, so, they're they're piloting yeah, a, a. I had to I had very to point Flash that Gordon out. Ship. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, the and, sci-fi and the, nerd that I am. <clears> the use <throat> of yeah, the use of the imagery there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it was a. This was really. I mean, they were they were working with um, Russell Mulcahy or I think David Mallet with these. Um, mm-hmm. And these were really like little mini movies for think of what you will. Some of them might be a little quirky or campy, uh, but, but they, these, the, the videos that accompany these songs are just really incredible and just been really like prime time music video in its, in its heyday. And mm-hmm. uh, th- so Radio Gaga is, is like that. And then they go right into tear it up, which if there was any doubts uh, that queen could, could, whether or not they could rock or whether or not they still they have it. Come back. Yeah, come back with that classic. This is a, a sound. Brian yeah. May scorcher. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. The second the second track on the album just absolutely uh, I'm gonna be corny. <laughs> the second track on uh, the second track on the album tears it up. Nothing corny about that because it's true. <laughs> That's the name of the title. <laughs> just it's got it's got this the Stomp, it's got a, a stomping sound. It's it's Mercury just really letting loose on it. And, and Brian May probably like, finally, like we can put some guitars on a yeah. song again. And this this was a song that was written by him. Uh, and, and they mm-hmm. were just, uh, that's one of the great things about, about Queen is they could move so easily between something like Bohemian, some big and broad as Bohemian Rhapsody, and then do something quirky like Flash Gordon. You know they were able to to really strat, straddle those different those different types of genres, and then do do the really heavy stuff. You know, like they would do Stone Cold mm-hmm. Crazy and, and heavy guitar stuff mm-hmm. too. So they were just in there, just doing every, like throwing everything against the wall, and and tear it up is yeah. just one of those hard rocking uh, hard rocking songs. I love it. I it's love no it. surprise to me that you know a lot of their music is that they would break into doing films and, 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 you know, uh, music for films and that kind of thing. Cause their music was always sort of cinematic anyway. It always, always had that sort of like real in your face kind of almost dare I say it, but operatic, you know, that's that, that big, bold sound, but, but, yeah. but rock as well. And so you could almost, I'm surprised they never actually did. So like a, a proper rock opera, Mm-hmm. In a, in a sense, like that, or a concept album, like you know that way. Yeah, they so. they certainly could bring the bombast when they needed to. That that's the thing is they had the ability to to really swing for the fences when they wanted to, and then and then do this quirky stuff. And, and that really is because of uh, in Queen there was four writers. Yeah, so it wasn't just Fre- Freddie Mercury mm-hmm. was not the sole lyricist or songwriter. Brian May brought a certain sensibility to it. Roger Taylor, he his stuff tends to be on the on the kind of the weirder side. He wrote he wrote Radio Gaga, and then the hit maker basically is like John Deacon. Secret Secret Weapon mm-hmm. of Queen is is the silent uh, the silent bass player John Deacon who was really adept at, at writing songs. So every each one of these members was skilled in their own right and skilled in a different way. That they it was such mm-hmm. a melting pot of different things, but it was all Queen. That was the that was the thing is you probably wouldn't yeah probably couldn't tell who wrote these songs if you didn't know put it that way mm-hmm. without without looking at the at the yeah you know at the uh, the composer and then next up which is uh, I think my favorite song on this album uh, is it's a hard life mm-hmm. yeah it's just his, it's his just, vocals on this oh it's his voice just soars in this song 
and, and just the lyric. And he wrote this song, and it's it's just it's heart wrenching. It's about relationships. It, it's a big song, and his vocal really matches it. And mm -hmm. th this one, I, I kind of, uh, you know, if you catch me in the right mood, I can get a little emotional listening to that song. Yeah, I, 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 <clears throat> I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm really shocked that this was not universally like so loved at the time. Like, how did we not? America, you know, the Amer Americans like, you know, and why didn't this do as good, you know, a song like this, you know, compared to like some of their older stuff, it's, it's still very much, it, it's Freddie Mercury at this time, he's a little bit older. He's, you know, he's been through some stuff. He's been living his life and, you know, that kind of thing. And, and it's, it's real personal and it's, and, and what, how a lot of people didn't really embrace this album or you know or specifically this song is even is surprising to me because yeah. it really it really did come back with a with a really with a vengeance with this record I absolutely feel. It's, it's an understated so, masterpiece I, yeah I, like i said i think it's the i think it's the, the strongest in in their 80s mm -hmm. it's my favorite i i like 80s queen better i think they had come into their own they had kind of figured out what they were doing yeah uh, and freddie's voice had matured i love where he's got some of the growl behind it because he didn't have that when he was younger. He really, mm -hmm. he was able to sing the high stuff and, and really belt, but he didn't have that lower register and that, that, that growl that he's able to, was able to get from, from basically from here on out. Um, it's just mm -hmm. his, his voice on this. Didn't he get that from one smoking? And, and, I don't know. <laughs> I think he said like, I think he said, I, he was, I'm pretty sure in an interview he started smoking because he wanted to get that register in his voice that that sort of phlegmy kind of you know like growl and like you were saying but uh yeah <laughs> yeah he's he definitely i used to enjoy watching way. uh when he was interviewed I, I i always got a kick out of watching him be, being interviewed because he's like talking about like domestic stuff and and you know well you know i i i can't cook and you know with the it is you know that the overbite that he had so he had, yeah. had that slight lisp you know like so it was <laughs> hey, it was very shy in, in yeah. real life he was yeah not it was quite the opposite of everyone thinks he's this big larger than life personality which he was on stage but in real life yeah. he was very shy and retiring and, and didn't mm -hmm. grant a lot of interviews and, and kept to himself and was very private didn't latch on to people if he didn't know them very well and, and would keep himself mm -hmm. guarded but but on stage I, I, it was a totally different you would never know yeah you would never know he was just right. gi giving everything on stage and made you feel like you were you were he part, was, of the, part of the yeah party. he was a force to be reckoned with he, he you know he totally unleashed his true self on, on stage you know yep. and unfortunately queen or you know are one of those groups well i mean through no fault of ours of course because they weren't touring at this point. So it's a, it's a band that, uh, we never got to see, yep. you know, unfortunately. It's a, it's a so, regret concert. Yeah. It's a, it's yep. a regret. It's a sad one. It's too yep. bad. And then after, after it's a hard life, man on the prowl, I listen when I listen to it now, I caught it. I figured it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is like the sequel to crazy little thing called love. Yeah, it's it's the same type of feel. It's, it's that rockabilly same. thing. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, it, it, it absolutely. Yeah. It, it has some of the same kind of backing vocals to it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm like, listen. I'm like, what? Like, wow. This is kind of like the yeah. It's the sequel to to. I actually to like it better. Love. To be honest, because yeah. it's a to me, it's a little stronger. It's a little. His voice is, I think, better on this song. It's it's deeper. It's a little um, bit of a rave up it's, too. It's, I mean, it's more. It's more, yeah. It's much more aggressive than yeah. you know. It's less yeah. poppy and a little more rocking mm -hmm. uh, is, is what it is. This is kind of like yeah. the, the dirtier cousin <laughs> to crazy yeah, little exactly. thing called love. <laughs> a little, right. Right? A little, <laughs> little bit, a little bit grind, a little bit grimier, but uh, yeah. still, still in that vein though, that, that it's got that same feel to it. So if you like crazy little thing called love, you've already got something uh, you can connect to on here. Well, we and just, then, we just talked about it, like him being so timid. And this, it, you feel like this is the song where he, yeah, you know, he's, he's letting something out there. You know, it's like, you know, he, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, been around a little bit and just, you know, yeah. But I, <laughs> I, I actually prefer it to, to crazy little thing called love, to be honest, but yeah. Uh, love that know. drum Randy in there, Freddy. you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hey, I, 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 I don't know. It, it's cool. It's a little too it, catchy. <laughs> it's a little too catchy. No, I, I think it has to be wrong. I love, I love, I love it, but it's, you know, man, I'm man on the prowl is just, yeah, it, it you know. It's, I just love it. It's a little bit stronger. It's a little dirtier, a little more aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, and th- this is a quick album. It's only got nine songs. Yeah. And, and I did kind of notice, again, in the listening, I, I noticed some similarities too. And, and once we kind of go through the rest of the songs, I'll, I'll kind of circle back on it. So side two opens with another synth heavy Roger Taylor song called machines and it is very very industrial sounding and yep. it's it, they use like a like a sampler to to manipulate the vocal so it sounds like there's a machine kind of does some talking in the middle and a vocoder it, it's it's got that yeah it's like that metallic and and machine kind of throb to it and it's got and it's mm-hmm. got that the john deacon's bass just on the bottom of it just mm-hmm just really flattening everything out and just, and driving it. But it, but it, 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 it does mirror. I'll, I'll tip my hand. Now it mirrors radio Gaga it mirrors mm-hmm. the opening track on side two mir- mirrors the opening track on side one. They're it, the well, only, it, they're the it, only it, two songs that are like that, that, that have it only seen. Feel it feels it. like a theme. It feels yeah. like, like a reoccurring theme going on here. Like what, you know, there's, they're talking about radio. They're talking about heading into the eighties. Here's, here's a, here's a song that's, that's talking about the, I guess the, you know, all the toys at the time. And, you know, you know, there's this sort of sci-fi thing again, whole going on. ELO would do it with time. Mm-hmm. You know, some of the movies that were out at the time were dealing with, you know, robots and, you know, that, you know, uh, killer robots and all that. If we're not careful, technology could, you know, yep. could destroy us. And that, so I guess he was kind of going for that vibe with the song. Yeah, the, com- you know, the so. computer age was just beginning. So it was yeah. kind of like a new thing. It was a new, yeah. new frontier that we were on. Right. And that, uh, that was the eighties. It was like, we, yeah. you know, a lot of people were kind of thinking that that's what was going to happen. We were going to get all this great technology. And by the end of the eighties, we we're going to be like living in some futuristic world with flying cars <laughs> and, you know, you know, kind of, a, you know, like a Blade Runner world where we were just like, to, yeah. you know, you know, and that kind of thing. So no, <laughs> you know, no that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. We, we have something called a hoverboard that you step on and then you promptly fall off and break your, break your spine that, or your tailbone. Pink. That's from, that's the, from the <laughs> <laughs> that, That's the future is, is a hoverboard <laughs> that actually has wheels and it doesn't hover at all. <laughs> right we we wanted yeah. so bad to have back to the future two hoverboards that we made something yeah. with two wheels and said this is a hoverboard <laughs> welcome to the future yeah. so the the, the yeah. next track is another one of my favorites is i want to break free and mm-hmm. if you've ever seen the video if you go on youtube this is the video where the members of queen are dressed in drag and it was a takeoff on a on an english show yeah. called coronation street and here's kind yeah. of where the, the U.S. problem started for Queen. And this is absolutely ridiculous. First of all, I love this song. This is a John Deacon you know, masterpiece. Uh, he just writes such good songs. And, and you would think that Freddie, you would think that maybe Freddie wrote this. If you listen to I Want to yeah. Break Free yeah. and just, uh, just the things we, we know about Freddie Mercury, um, you would think, oh, he wrote this. But no, it's John Deacon. And John Deacon wrote another one bites the dust. He was like the hit maker. He really wrote uh, mm. their their most a lot of their most accessible songs. But if you look in the video, they're in drag. It's goofy. It's it's campy. It's a takeoff. MTV would not play that video. Are you kidding me? They really? would not play that. Vi- really, they would not play that video. Qu- the members of Queen dressing up in drag, and they thought, well, we're not going to play this. Like really. <sighs> Really? Wow. <laughs> really? Meanwhile, MTV. there's like people like yeah. Gary Newman, like the glam rock thing was still going on. You know, oh, just especially anything, like anything new else. Waves. Yeah. Anything sure. else that's happened yeah. since. It's like, really, this yeah. go watch the video. It is the tamest well, thing ever. There's nothing to it. It's, and, and right. they're, it's, it's barely, they're He's barely in the it. They're vacuum in the cleaner. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're no, in drag at the, time, in the beginning I, and I'm, the end. I'm, so. not, I'm not surprised at the time that that, yeah, that kind of thing was still going yeah, on. How long did it take for Michael Jackson to, to, to be to, to be on, on MTV, MTV yeah. So know? it's just it's just absolutely so. silly. But but this they felt it signaled that United States audiences were not interested in them, and that they were just that there's no point in in going back there. Like I said, their their last tour was 1982, and they would mm. not return to the United States for a tour. And part of it is because of that. The video was was quote unquote banned. I, it's just silly to even say that. Yeah, banned yeah. by MTV because they dressed up like women. Oh my God, I'm so I, threatened. Don't, no, I can't watch that. So yeah, I used silly, to see silly, that. silly. I mean, it must have been maybe like Friday night videos or so, because I used to see that video all the time. Yeah. Well, I had the, I had the, well, I had the video tape of MTV. the video. So I used to watch it all the time myself. I didn't care. You know, it's, yeah, but I, I, I remember seeing it. Yeah. 
I remember watching it. I didn't have MTV because I didn't have cable at the time, you know, that or that night age, flight but, USA. Yeah, night it was flight. probably remember on that? one of those shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Now we're really dating been. ourselves night flight. <laughs> night. Yeah. Right. That was on like, yeah. I don't know. Was, was it USA or uh, before USA was USA? Oh, I don't know. This was, yeah. 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 See? It was. But yeah, but uh, I want to, I want to break free. It's just, I love it. His, his, I love his mm-hmm. vocals on this on this song too. He's just really just sounds so relaxed on this album, having fun, really really working the the rock stuff hard. But but then when he needs to when he needs to let it loose for mm-hmm. for it's a hard life. He he knows how to do it. His his voice he was just in such good command of his voice on this album. It really, I think this is really what. Yeah, I agree. It, it's really different from from the game. You know, the game is kind of, he's kind of working up to it. This, it's mature. It's like, it's like Elvis. It's like Elvis, like when Elvis was yeah. younger, his voice was a little more tender and a little more nicer. But then when he got a little bit older, it it had some, some, some meat behind it. Right. It was, it was, it had some, some heft. Mm-hmm. And that's the way this, his voice is on this album. And then, and then going forward, it, it, I think it would carry into a kind of magic. Um, so uh, yeah. Next up is is Keep Passing the Open Windows, which was uh, written by Mercury. It was supposed to be in a film called New, New uh, Hotel New Hampshire, but they never ended up mm-hmm. not using it. So it was kind of written for that, but they ended up using it on here. And it's just a great, uh, it's another, it's a really up-tempo song. Just another great Mercury performance. Everything on this album is a great Mercury performance. Yeah, It's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know how this yeah. album did and the not songs are do. and there and there is a, there is quite a bit of the quirky kind of thing going on here. Even like I want to break free has that sort of like doom, 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 yeah. you know, like kind of there's not really that it's much catchy. guitar. You know, it's like it, but it but it, it is. It, there's 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 a like you said that it's 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 much more eclectic. But and everything's sort catchy. Of everybody on this has album. their moment. <laughs> yeah, that's it's the thing. Everybody like, has their 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 moment to shine on this record. But Freddie, yeah. I mean, I mean, he you know. But that's a great one too. I like, and that one's a uh, not the song that you usually. I, I remember, like, funnily enough, I used to fast forward this song. Like, I would tr- I would skip over this song for some weird reason. I don't know why. But then you go back and listen. I'm like, why? Why did I do this? This was a bad, you know. Yeah, it's catchy. every song is good on this album. You this know. one's really up tempo, and yeah, uh, you know, might be one of the faster songs on the album as far as as far as tempo and beat. Well, I think the really reason kind of for it is because of the next song. I had I to so. get to Hammer to Fall. Okay. <laughs> which is and, which is another And uh, that I, is my God, that is like my my all time favorite Queen song. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 you know, and, and you do start to see some patterns on this album. Uh Hammer to Fall and Tear It Up mm-hmm. are both the guitar heavy songs. And this is what I was getting to is is side one and side two really have some mirror images. Yeah. Uh not that the songs sound the same. But they they elicit the same type of feel to them. And Hammer to Fall is another heavy Brian May song. And Freddie's up to the challenge. I think I I when I when I listen I listened to this album this morning and uh I, I put it on and and as soon as Freddie I heard Freddie's voice, I, I think I started to tear up. But it's this song in particular. Whatever hairs I have left <laughs> on the back of my neck, okay, I, I get chills every time that that when they, when they all kick in and you know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. right? Right from the bridge. And then, yeah. you know, what the hell are we fighting for? That's the, mo- oh my, I, I'm just, and the backing time, vocals, just, just the I vocal get chills. blend. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just amazing. We, we can't short change what the three of them do together, which is Freddie Mercury, Brian May and, and Roger Taylor. They, they usually make up the chorus. John Deacon doesn't really, doesn't really sing. Mm. And so there's, it, you also see the return of those classic, queen kind of backing vocals as well yeah, which makes yeah. up the whole thing it, it right it's that's the whole queen experience is cr- crunching guitars kick-ass piano soaring vocals roger taylor behind the kit letting loose as well he's no slouch uh no. He, he's got a and he's got a, a particularly big drum drum sound and on his this drums album. drums sound phenomenal on this record yeah they're and, really because you know, everybody else was using sound. electronic drums at this point he's still he still had that heavy snare and, 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 you know, the, especially the toms, on this song. you know, yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. It's, it's like his, his drums just really have a big deep sound almost in some ways, almost like a, not, not exactly like a timpani, but, but kind of like it, it has a yeah. big, really, really big sound, especially mm. in this one, when, when yeah. there's that break 
when right. he's uh, when he's hitting the the low toms. Uh, it's just mm-hmm. got a really really thick and and big. And this is the song that I it. always I always envisioned Freddie with the with the mic, and he's with the with the right with the fist like. Like yeah, that, right? Classic. He's always doing that. Like, what the, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> we used to do that like all the time. You know, we'd be driving around in the car, you know, the three of us, like our mutual friend, you know, just like our fists are pumped. Like, <laughs> it's like Wayne's yeah, world, just, right? You know, that's exactly, yeah. that was us, you know? Yeah, that this is but, the, like the the song that where all of his like classic poses would come in. Like, yeah. Just with yeah. the mic stand and, just, and spinning. Total and, command, and quick, total quick, command. Quick, quick turns and all the... Yep all the mercury moves and that's what made him so great too is just his his moves on stage i just love i could mm-hmm. watch him even if it was like the the sound was muted i could watch a queen concert silent and be yeah. happy just watching that's him. true that's true and, and then and that's um, unfortunately that's the only thing we had though was the with the videos yeah. and and yeah, that like was all, that was that they started releasing like i think they kind of made up for the fact that they weren't doing as well in america with all those vhs tapes that were coming out in droves yeah and then and like then they did some live stuff after too. another yeah yeah, yeah. rock mm-hmm. uh rock and uh, live magic yep rock and rio they 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 actually really started to to record a lot of those concerts after mm-hmm. uh after live aid and then the album concludes with with a really somber song and it's very sparsely produced there's actually nothing to it except for some some acoustic guitar uh, written by Freddie Mercury and, and Brian May, is this the world we created? Actually, was it's about poverty and it's about what what's going on in the world, and very fitting. I, I, we'll get to we'll get to Live Aid in a little bit, and mm-hmm. and not written with that particularly in mind, but it turns out that it would play a no. a, a pretty pivotal role in in Live Aid it, as well. It's the theme of the show. Yeah, the entire so, show is the theme of if this song could be the theme song of you know of, of Live Aid. What Live Aid was and, all about. Yeah, but yeah, so, I can't. I, I can't even get through this song without crying. I was I, I was very emotional this morning listening to it. I was emotional listening to the entire album, by the way. I mean, just because I hadn't heard it in such a long time, it just brings back a lot of great memories. It it, it all came kind of flooding back, and mm. uh, especially this song. I it, it it's sometimes I have to pause it because it it his vocal is so beautiful on this on this yeah. on this song, and it, and it, you know, and the song actually tears your heart out to begin with the lyrics and you know and everything else but it, it's just that god that vocal that just gets you every time you know yeah, uh, yeah. and yeah this uh, this album is a, a near near and dear to both of our hearts it was mm-hmm. one of those ones when when we were just kind of coming up in, in the world as it were uh and, and as yeah. far as listening our to music and, and deciding and deciding what we what we wanted to listen to mm-hmm. as opposed to stuff that was on on the radio uh, you know, we got to the age where we started selecting what we right. were into and, and we would split, both of us would split off. We we had our common things that we've talked about before. And then, uh, you know, I, I would split off towards one thing. Eric would go towards the who and, and perhaps Genesis, but these albums like this one is just one that we were able to gather around. And mm-hmm. it's, uh, again, I can't believe how this is not heralded as something really special it's still kind of it, you know, i couldn't when i looked up the sales i was i was g- getting ready i'm like okay how many did it sell a couple mil it's like five hundred thousand. like what yeah it's just it's just a travesty so i really should check if you've never heard listen to the works it is classic queen it is better than classic queen i think because they, they had gone through all the bohemian rhapsody and fat bottom girls and all, and all that kind of stuff yeah, and this is them. This is the more mature side, but still rocking. I mean, you've got, like I said, it. it both mm-hmm. sides kind of mirror each other with some electronic music, some really heavy guitar based, and then some some really pretty ballads. Like it's a hard life. I would I would put that up against like I want I want to break free or keep passing open windows. They're, they're very similar. Yeah, so it, this it's, is it's definitely of its time. You know, it definitely sounds like an '80s album but for sure. So? But you I think mean, so? it it. I think so. Yeah, I mean, aside from the you know the uh, the Brian May stuff, you know, a mm-hmm. couple of the songs, but it is very much of its time. But I don't care. It's you know, it's not. It's you know, it could be. You know, people might say, "Oh, this sounds dated." You know, but I I don't like because the album means so much to me. It's like it's one of those gems that you're just kind yeah. of like, yeah. Well, I, I think I maybe because I'm so close to you it, know? I don't think it sounds dated yeah. at all. I, I mean, I wouldn't. Obviously, it's from the '80s, but I wouldn't say. 
that it's got that gloss on it. It's got that eighties production sheen that we talk about a lot. No, maybe it, not so much. It has gloss, that. I feel that this production. is a rock album. This is an eighties rock album to me, but yeah, not. It, and, and most, rock most in the eighties didn't it's, particularly sound dated, but they, they sold it. They completely sold it. Yeah. You know, they, they, you know, they adapted really, really well in the eighties. And the, I think it was a reset. Yeah. I, I think yeah. after, after well, a head the, scratch, the like this, hot space, <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, but for me, it was like, because it was sandwiched and I'm bringing up the sandwich thing again, uh, it was sandwiched between Flash Gordon and then Highlander, which they do the music for that as well. And they would play Hammer to Fall in the movie. It appeared in the film as well, part as, you know, part of the soundtrack. Yeah, I think it was playing and, on the jukebox or something. Yeah. When he was in, uh, oh, he was. Dri- I think he was driving in the car, like the, yeah. the 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 mercenary guy. Yep. You know, he got you know yeah, the, Kurgan the, came the, in the and military guy, the marine. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, 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 go! Come on, marine! <laughs> Talking to himself. He's running down the alleyway, hey, like hide behind a dumpster. Hey, cop! <laughs> two, three, Come on over here, stealing your gut. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. that guy. Uh, we're gonna get. Um, we'll get to Highlander just, as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact so that, like I told you, like I said before, like the fact that it, it seemed it was perfectly in the center of of these two, you know, films. It was very, very cinematic. I almost feel like the works is very, very much in tune with that, you know, with that kind of feel. Like a few of the songs in the album, you could definitely feel like they were, could be part of a a movie or a soundtrack in that vein. I think they were very much in yeah. that headspace at that point. So yeah, they were just writing yeah. smart, just smart songs. I yeah. mean, they just really had uh, the great reset. Like I said, they were just kind of after hot space was so maligned. They, I think they just were able to maybe a sigh of relief that they were able to get back to just the, I don't want to call it the queen formula, but getting back to doing what they do and just, just writing really great songs and each Mm-hmm. each member kind of playing to their strengths and, and writing the stuff that they like and then handing it over to Freddie Mercury and he just makes it queen. He, you, yeah. you really can't tell who's writing what for, you know, for the most part. The interesting thing about this right. is they wrote a lot of songs for this album. There was a Christmas song. One of my favorite Christmas songs actually is Thank God It's Christmas. A queen did a Christmas song and it was from these sessions mm-hmm. and it is a really great Christmas song. If you want to hear Freddie Mercury really, really belt, um, check out Thank God It's Christmas. But there was also uh, a couple of other songs. Uh, Man Made Paradise, There Must Be More to Life Than This. And and these two particular songs, if you mm. want the spiritual sequel, I guess, to the works, n- the following year, 1985, Freddie Mercury would release his solo album, Mr. Bad Guy. And those mm. songs, Man Made Paradise, which was tossed from here from from the works and there must be more to life than this would be re-recorded by freddie mercury for his mr bad guy which is another understated album nobody ever talks about his solo album it it hit number 159 in the u.s charts it went nowhere fast Mm -hmm. it was a dog uk top 10 worldwide eh, okay so i don't understand people queen is so much beloved now we Mm -hmm. have to remember back then they just they they couldn't they couldn't win for losing. You know, they, the, they just couldn't get it. Well, they couldn't catch a yeah. break. Like the, the point to be made though, is that they were, they were being creative. They were yeah. working. They were prolific in their, in their output. Yeah. It didn't you, stop if them. you think about it, it, you know, it didn't stop them, you know, they just did what they did. And, and I think it's some of the finest music they ever put out. Oh, absolutely. And so, I, I love yeah. Mr. Bad Guy. Check it out. It, yeah. And that came out in uh, April of 1985. Mm-hmm. Right. So April of 85, that comes out and it, it doesn't really do anything. But then July 13th, a day that will live forever in my memory, which was yeah. Live Aid. And uh, I remember that day vividly. I was home all day. I don't know if mm-hmm. I was working or I took off of work. Uh, I had a couple of uh, VHS tapes at the ready. And I literally yep. sat uh, our, our VCR. I don't think that one had a remote control. I think I was sitting in front of the TV in front of the VCR. So kind of doing like we used to do with FM radio when we wanted to catch our favorite song, we would we would hit record and, and tape wait, it the radio. And wait I, for hours. <laughs> I literally sat all day and was recording right. different things from Live Aid. I was it was literally they called it the global jukebox. Yeah. And that's literally what it was. And and I was there from the morning and they were they were going back and forth between, you know, uh between the United States and the UK. And just all I don't think these different we had artists. Any conception of how just how big this thing was going to be when they started talking about it on like MTV and 
And, you know, it was good Lord. It was like, you know, that day was just so, I mean, it was, it was glued to the TV. I, I, I just, I couldn't, I, you know, my mom's calling me, Hey Eric, go to the star. I'm like, no, I'm not leaving the house. Cause I'm watching live aid. What's you go live the, aid, you know, like you go to the store. <laughs> What's slap, live slap. aid. What the hell is live aid? I'm like, yeah. it's, you are not, you don't, you don't later on. My whole family was watching it because they, Oh, Paul McCartney, you know, all these people were yeah. on there. Like, you know, Stevie wonder and, you know, Oh, you know, like, you know, they got, they, they got into it, you know, by it the was, end of the day. It was day, something unseen at the time. It, yeah, was, it was absolute. Uh, I'll I'll never forget it. So we, ba- basically, we were both doing the same thing. I was home, literally in front of the TV, sitting down, just pressing record when stuff came on that I was interested in. Uh, mm-hmm. a, a sad footnote to this story is that my mother would record over that VHS tape her soap operas. Oh no <laughs> way! Yes, she did a couple of years later. I'm like, oh my that, god, where's that tape? And I'm, I put it on. It's like the guiding light is on soap oh, opera. no i'm like really ma ma oh. <laughs> so any, but you know what they, they well we have oh. we have we have youtube now so it's it's all there yeah yeah what we're what we're getting to is 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 queen performed at live aid uh they they did not perform on the do they know it's christmas single they missed that and that that's where live aid sprang out of was was the uh you know that that whole benefit uh, which came out at Christmas time, and and they decided to Bob Geldof decided to uh, kind of grow that idea uh, and and build upon it mm-hmm. with Live Aid, and Queen uh, was asked. Now here's the thing: if you've seen Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie, I, I really like that movie, but it's not entirely. They play fast and loose with some of the facts, especially around Live Aid. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, they they give yep. you the impression they they give you a couple of false impressions. <laughs> um, one that Queen was on the verge of breaking up. They weren't. They just came off of the Works tour, which again worldwide was very popular. Maybe not. They hadn't toured the U.S., but they were. They would, had just come off that. Freddie Mercury was yeah. not aware, or the band members, and he was not aware because he didn't get tested till much later uh, that he had AIDS. So that was they kind of put that in there to make it to really like up the the stakes and the ante. But I don't think you needed to. Um, so Queen was asked to perform at Live Aid. The unknown quantity was they did not have their regular stage show, their 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 whole setup and everything. So they were going kind of out there really raw. Uh, and what happened? Mm-hmm. Uh, they would play for the, for their set. They were given, you know, everybody was given a certain amount of time. Uh, they got they ended up getting six. They ended up getting six songs in their set, but they ended up performing seven songs, right? Out of the seven songs, three of them are from the works. That should tell you something yep. about, about this album mm-hmm. that, yes, they had come fresh off of it. it started off with, Bohe- if, you've, if, if you haven't seen it, uh, you've seen it on YouTube yet, I'm, I'm not sure this is the right show for you. Um, if, if <laughs> you should go watch it if you haven't seen it. it, is, it I remember watching it, and, and I was excited because it was Queen, the 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 ripples would only be felt and would get stronger years later as people discovered that their little small performance in basically two continents worth of worth of artists the only one Mm -hmm. that's ever talked about honestly is queen and and led zeppelin reunited and and no one talks about it that's right everybody talks about queen no and what they did and and Back then, it was it was it was a big thing, but it's only grown. So they started off with with just the first part of Bohemian Rhapsody, and then it transitions into Radio Gaga, and that's when it's on. Uh, if you don't get chills up your spine looking at Wembley Stadium and all those people clapping when when Radio Gaga has the double snare drum hit, and everybody in the audience is clapping yeah. and holding their hands up, he has command of what. 70,000 people that are just absolutely mm-hmm. in at, at his beck and call literally. So they go through radio Gaga. He, then he calls yeah. for hammer to fall. He calls for another song from the works right there. They, they, they do hammer to fall right there. Uh, another one. And then he does that, the whole acapella thing. Any, everybody else was just yeah. imitating after anybody that tried, I think Phil Collins would do it and try and do it a little bit in his concerts that kind yeah, of call and response, yeah. right? <laughs> it's not the same. 
Mercury had the world in his hands. Oh, nobody had the voice. And nobody and had the, the voice like Freddie. Nobody had the voice. Nobody yeah. had the presence. <clears throat> nobody had the balls that he had as a front man mm-hmm. to, to just del- to go out there and, and, and eat it up and deliver it and give it right back to everybody. They were, yeah. I remember when he was doing that too. And the whole stadium was singing and he was, he was conducting them with his hands. Right. And, and telling them when to stop. That's right. And, yeah. and just, uh, actually, I think he did that. I think, I, actually, I think he did Rita Gaga. Then he did that. And then I think he called for hammer to fall. Yeah. It's just absolutely amazing. Oh, was, you know, these, these four they, guys they on the stage. The day. They, they owned you know. the day. And then they would come back later. So mm-hmm. Queen would finish their set. David Bowie would follow. The Who would follow. <laughs> right. Elton John yeah. would follow. And then Freddie Mercury and Brian May would just those two would come out and and Brian May would sit on a chair. I believe Freddie Mercury did as well. And they would sing, is this the world we created? So that was the third song from this brilliant album, The Works, that really, if you go and and just look up, if you don't listen to the song, just look up the lyrics and you'll see how it fits with with the live aid charity and what they were trying to do and and just the struggle of mm-hmm. uh of the children in africa and it just and and then just our you can just kind of feel a universal feeling towards it and a universal uh companionship to it or i'm i'm not using the right word but and that's the thing they would never be another another show like it i mean there's there've been benefit concerts for everything you know i mean but nothing lot, to the scale age- you know, there was, I think they tried to do, you know, recreate it at one point. I don't think it was quite as... Yeah, it was a, I think it was called Live 8. Yeah, I can't, I, can't, I don't like even, that. I mean, obviously we don't, Yeah. But nobody's talking about it, nobody remembers it. <laughs> but this thing, I mean, God, uh, you know, yeah, they totally command, I remember that performance. I think, as a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I, I actually came over to your house. Uh-oh. And you had the tape. You had to hear it already taped that performance <laughs> and you played it back for me because I hadn't seen it yet. He goes, check this out. And that's what, yeah, you showed me Radio Gaga. And I was like, what? You know, this was, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Now I that, that comes that comes back to me now. Okay. Yeah, I was there. there. I was at your house. And then I left and then went back home and I'm watching it with my, that's when I started watching with my family for, you know, dinner yeah. time. And we were just had the TV, you know. Just an so amazing of course, this day. is before the internet. This is before, obviously, the, you know, with cell phones, every, everybody can be linked up. Yeah, to this that was like like, like word of mouth, easy. magazines, and and TV. It was and this how was the word just got you had to, you had to tune in. You had to you had to be there. You had to participate with this. You couldn't just watch a portion of it and then they would replay it. They maybe they, they taped it, you know, later on. I guess you could. But not not right away. It's like now they could do that kind of thing, an instant yeah. replay kind of thing, and all that. But back then, it was it was just so unprecedented, and just be. But with, with their performance, you know, I definitely feel like that was. Oh, I still get chills when I watch it. I I absolutely can watch that and be taken right back, and mm. and just kind of instantly be transported. Instantly, like it's like Freddie was never gone. Mm-hmm. It's like he he like this performance he he will live in eternity if if nothing yeah. else survives and this does uh this is all you need to see then if you want to know mm-hmm. about queen watch watch what they did during live aid and and listen to yeah. the works which is <laughs> which which a lot of that so stuff then, is based on course, so of course because of this performance in live aid what happened i mean they then they started releasing they got a resurgence they they got re-energized yeah, they got the resurge they got the there's those two compilation like the best of queen and it had all the new stuff on it right yeah. all the you know like the works and the game you know yeah re- and- re- reinvigorated they they would re-enter the studio and they would write the song one vision which was inspired by what what they felt coming out of live aid uh, and that would go that would lead off the their next album a uh, kind of magic which for the most part was the music the highlander soundtrack, soundtrack to the highlander movie but one vision was not mm-hmm. a part of that actually that was used in uh, the movie iron eagle but that which really kind of caught horrible. them re-energizing kickstarter One of the worst it, movies ever made <laughs> <laughs> lewis gossett <laughs> it's like, junior <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of like the cashing in on the Top Gun thing, and yeah, yeah. That, that was just. But, but that absolutely that but. this was the shot in the arm that Queen needed at the time because they were kind of 
at this point, maybe wavering, not before what Live Aid, but they were kind of wavering uh, about what, what to do. And this kind of really just, okay, yeah, let's go. And they got re-energized, kind of magic, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Highlander soundtrack, which is really great. You want to talk, I which think they, is, go, they may even go a little bit harder in, in there with, yeah, with uh, I, I, I the agree. That's, a, oh my good. They, I mean, re- they really go wants for to it live there. forever. Who yeah. wants to live forever? Give me the prize. Me There's just I a lot of hard, gutted. like a lot, lot of hard rocking yeah. stuff uh, on there. It's just, uh, yeah. It's just uh, that was just just and a great even album. One on year own. of love, which is this like slow ballad, yeah. is powerful because he's got that voice, you know, like yeah. and, who, and this who is wants like to kind of forever? has that has that cheesy uh, sax in it. The one year mm-hmm. of love, you know, talking about <laughs> yes. like in the, when they're in when he's in the bar. And that's when he's that's that. playing on the jukebox. Yeah, Christopher yeah. Lambert. Yeah, and he's sitting in the bar and he's picking up, you know, what's her name comes in and yeah. Uh, but even that song is great, and it's yeah. not really. Yeah, you could uh, you could uh, you could argue that that could be like a Freddie Merc that could have appeared on his solo record because it doesn't really sound like Queen except for the little vocal parts when they kick in. They ooh, you know, like yeah. the, you know, you hear Roger, you know, uh, yep. Brian yeah, May. Like and, I said, and even Roger, even Who Wants to Live Forever, something as tender as that, is another. Oh, uh, but it builds big up. song from Highlander and, and it really placed well in, in, in the yeah. movie. It really has a lot of impact. So no, um, it's used to great effect. In that yeah, if, you, if you want to yeah. see like a two hour extended queen music video, uh, go ahead and watch Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a queen. It is. It's kind of like a queen music video. Cause they have a lot of, but stuff. in this case, they, they actually, <laughs> they actually did more instead of like flash Gordon, where it was more score music. They, they wrote songs for the Yeah. Film. These are songs. They didn't do any of the score. Uh, they didn't do the score. That was um, uh, the person that Michael did... Kamen. Was it Michael? Michael Kamen. No. Michael was Kamen. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. He did, you know he went on to do a lot of films of the eighties. Yeah. So. And and the yeah. the curious thing, which we'll probably talk about when we do when we do do Highlander, but they they recorded a version of New York, New York, which is played mm-hmm. for like five seconds in the movie, but does not appear anywhere else. You can't get their their version. Queen did a version of New York, New York. And uh, you can't get it anywhere except for like the five the seconds one, that it appears in the Highlander movie. You hear it in the movie. That's the only, yeah, that's the only way that's you can it. hear it. And you're like, so. what is that? And then it just, and it's so short and it's so, it's just a, a small <laughs> snippet and it leaves you. I was like, well, I'd like to hear that. Uh, and then, and then Queen of course, the follow scene that, that, that it appears in is, is absolutely nuts. I mean, it's bonkers. We won't go into yeah. it, but it's Clancy just, Brown, yeah. Mr. Krabs. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness but what they would they would follow up oh, uh, kind of magic with uh the miracle which is another mm-hmm. strong release a gr- another great album you can it, freddie's voice did start to thin out just a little bit there uh and then their last album proper uh when when, when freddie was alive would be innuendo and that's just an amazing uh, an amazing achievement that that he knew he was sick yeah. he knew he didn't have yep. a lot of time uh, and he said to the to the guys, "Listen, write stuff, give me stuff. I will sing it. You guys can, f- you know, finish it, finish it off if you need to afterwards." And, and very prolific. They actually had a whole second album, which was made in heaven, which some of the stuff was was from the works that, and the, and the Mister Bad Guy sessions that they they threw out and they they redid it. Uh, but then there was some of that other stuff that mm-hmm. he had recorded the vocals on, and then they got around to putting the music uh, onto it. So. Freddie Mercury is just is literally in my book immortal. He is someone that is just there, yeah. I, there's there's no there's no one like him. I don't think uh, I'll 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 put him out there with with best frontman and and singer. Come combination of both. Yeah, best I, lead I, singer and frontman. Vo- vo- vocalist, I would say he's probably you know hands down the the best vocalist in rock. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was some Stein yeah. a couple of years ago. I some could, scientists I, were see, trying to do a study go. on him. I could, there you go, Dean. I could what? commit. What? So I, 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 did, you, did you hear that? No, I let said me Freddie Mercury's the best singer. The best wow. singer in rock. Nice. There you go. Nice. I committed. You heard it here first. We got. You know what? We got to do a top five now so you can put that as number one. We have to immortalize it in a top five. That's Then it'll be official. Um, mm. But yeah, he's, he's just one of those. And yeah, it's, it's such a shame, but uh, he's getting the, the due and the respect that he deserves and, and from young people uh, that yeah. on, on YouTube, his, his performance lives forever and people are always discovering it. There's always new reaction videos and people just getting blown away. And then the Bohemian Rhapsody uh, film helped also with that to, to bring queen 
Queen's story, but bring their music to a whole new audience in a, in a way that's very accessible. Rami Malek did an amazing job as Freddie Mercury. He won an Academy Award for Best Actor. For me, it starts with the works. The, the, ga- the game is a great one, but the works is, for me, is like, that's my, this is my Queen album. You know, we all have like kind of albums that we kind yeah. of claim and we, we, we maybe like their whole catalog, but there's one. And, and for me, it was, it was this one. It was, it was the works. I, I just mm-hmm. connected to it. I was at the right age. I was in the right part of my, my musical journey that I was open to it and, and ready for it. And it just delivered and it was part, it just connected with everything else I was into listening to, we were listening to the Moody Blues. We were talking about that the other night, Long Distance Voyager and an ELO. So it fits, it, it fit just in all those, those compartments that I was already in. It, it was just Queen was like, like another building block for me and the works really just kind of hit for me. And I just fell in love with it and just listened to that tape over and over. And then when the CD finally came out, I got the CD and it was yeah. just one of the, fir- one of the first ones I had ever gotten. And I still have that copy. I've never bought. I, I don't even know if they, I'm sure they did remasters and re-releases. Well, that was, but- I was, I, that was definitely on the rotation, wasn't it? I mean, in the car, yeah. you know, the three of us just cruising along and just that, yeah, that there wouldn't be any for the longest time. There, w- there would not be, any time that we'd be driving around if that album wasn't played. It would yeah. be very surprising indeed if it weren't, you know, but I, I just remember over and over, we, you know, that was, that was a staple for us. And yeah. again, that's why I got so emotional listening to this record because all that kind of just came back and, you know. Yeah. We're and, getting and old. We're getting old. So, <laughs> I mean, his voice is just so beautiful too. You can't help. You can't no, help. You can't. If, if you sit down and listen to it, which is different than watching the YouTube stuff, but if you sit down and put this album on, you'll you'll get just song after song of 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 just his you know the genius of Mer- of Freddie Mercury and just how he was able yeah. to to do these different types of songs for 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 the other mm-hmm. members that would write it and and make it his own and just make his his I don't know, just something about his voice just absolutely amazing nobody not, not nobody would compare like. you know and there's they've they've tried other singers and they you know they've and they're nothing Paul against Rogers. these people and, and Adam Lambert know. Adam well, Lambert they tried. And- uh, you know what? If, if they're still spread, they're 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 certainly. Uh, and I read with Paul Rogers. I mean, Paul Rogers is certainly no Freddie Mercury, and he wasn't trying to be. Mm-hmm. So in that case, if they're spreading the word of Queen, right? If they're getting out the you know kind of spreading the gospel of Queen, I- I'm okay yeah. with that because it because no one can be, and they're not trying to find one. Adam Lambert's a great singer, and he's got a he's got a powerful voice. I mean, he can belt. So I thought yeah. he was a good fit. Would I go see them? Probably not, but I don't have a problem with that with, with like the queen plus Adam Lambert, because that mm-hmm. that's reaching a whole other audience and, and exposing that music. And then people will go back and say, well, I want to hear what the original sounds like. And then they'll be like, wow, <laughs> like, like Adam yeah. Lambert is good. Freddie Mercury was just on a, on a whole other, other, you know, other plane of existence. When right? they made that uh, tribute, when they did that tribute concert to Freddie, uh, and George Michael, I remember yeah. playing with him and, our, and, a, and, a, and a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours. Uh, I, I remember him saying, oh, I can't wait. You know, the George Michael, I think he I think he is a good fit. And I, 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 I immediately thought of that that Batman comic where he's slapping Robin, you know, with the back. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Yeah. You know, George Michael over Freddie Mercury. I don't think so. You know, like it, it just no, I, I you know. Yeah, it's like I got I got to school you, man. I, you know. <laughs> no, he could. I mean, George hey, George Michael's no slouch. I mean, he was a, a fantastic vocalist. No, well. I so, yeah, right. And, but, and at the time, there was no plans for that. that. You know, during the tribute, it was just kind of everybody was still reeling, and it wouldn't be for for many years later that that they would decide to t- kind of take the Queen experience back out. Except for John Deacon, he retired. Um, he, he you know he was deep deeply affected by the loss of Freddie Mercury. Um, and he kind of said, you know, I'm, I'm done. I'm, it's time for me just to kind of sail off into the sunset and is very, very much living a reclusive life, but an amazing bass player. And, and I should I should make an amendment now for our if you've listened to our top five bass player episode, I, I think I'm going to make an amendment now. Uh, if you haven't yet, um, Nigel Harrison, I believe, is number three or number four. Uh, we're going to take him out. We're going to put John Deacon in there because I totally forgot about that. I think we talked about it a, a while ago. I'm like, shit, 
I forgot about John Deacon. I should have wrote him in and I didn't. And John Deacon is just absolutely, you know why? Cause he's so low key that he just felt, he didn't even, he didn't even like come up on the list. Cause he's just so low key as a person. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't want to be on the list because he's so I, low key. <laughs> I thought of, I thought maybe you'd pick him. <laughs> <laughs> of course you oh, did. Rub the salt in the wounds there. <laughs> <laughs> of course you thought. No, I, I, I honestly did. I did. I did think of uh, Roger D. De- <laughs> oh no! He's but a great he, yeah, he was player. great. So he's a yeah. great place, bass player and a formidable songwriter. So mm-hmm. yeah, th- this is an album you should definitely check out we'll call it's it's not the bohemian rhapsody queen it, it is something different but it's 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 a more mature queen i think and and like i said they they were really able to hone in because after this they had a sound they they didn't from, from here i think from here to to innuendo that really there was the queen sound and and all these out the next four albums the works kind of magic the miracle and innuendo really fit as a as a set Pretty much, I, I think, because they, yeah. they really have a, a flow that they didn't really change the sound too much. They just expanded it and, and just kind of continued continued that flow. And, and they just one album into the next was really strong. Each one of them was was really mm-hmm. strong. So, um, but start. I, I'm going to say start with the works if you're if you're looking for um, classic classic Queen. What's yeah. what say I what, mean, what it, say you, sir? It it, it is it, it's. I think the album's more. I mean, I, I do like a lot of the old stuff myself, you know, but again, it's, it's, it's very subjective and, and this album is definitely, it, it is underrated. I, I totally agree that it's, I don't know if it's my favorite, but again, there's, there's just that period of, of all of that stuff, which for me, it all kind of blends in, you know, yeah. so I, you know, to, to, to single this album out from the rest of the stuff from off the Highlander and, and even the, you know, the couple of songs off of Flash and, and the albums after, I don't know. It's kind of hard to to just to st- distinctively say, yeah, I think I like this best. So, but it, you know, it's just that whole period was was that, <laughs> of it was course queen. not. You're never you're never going to commit. No, this queen <laughs> the queen was at their absolute best in this period. And yeah. you know, from you know, it's just that you know, it was they were very consistent, and I love the music of the time. That that's the word you know? is, is consistent. Yeah. They they had, they yeah. had started a, a a period of consistency where one album after the other was just great music uh mm-hmm. in the same vein i don't mean sounding the same but i don't want to use the word formula because it wasn't a formula but but they they had found they had hit their stride let's put it that way after stumbling mm-hmm. with hot space if you kind of took out hot space you probably <laughs> could have started with the game not not talking about sound not talking I'm about sure flash gordon but you you probably could start with the game but I'm and, sure and make that a there's, strong case. I'm, you know i'm 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 sure that album. I would. I would think that that album probably would would be well received today. Hot Space. I think there's an. Think- uh, there would be an audience for that. For that. For that album. I think so. But you know, it's Queen doing something different, yeah. which you know they're more than welcome to do. I mean, you know, yeah, they well, experimented. Too, you know, too late now. Too late now. They did it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's just you know one of those things where you know. But for me, the '80s was. I think I. Uh, movies were a big deal for me too. So I think, again, that cinematic journey I was taking yeah. as well and, and having the music, some of my very favorite musical moments in movies yeah. came from when Queen is definitely on the, almost on top of that list when it comes yeah, to and it's, like and soundtracks very, and, you know, it's yeah. It's very strange that they would over right. a course of what? One, two, three, over a course of four albums, they would do two soundtracks, right? They'd do, yeah. They would do Flash Gordon, then they would put out Hot Space, then The Works, Mm-hmm. Than a kind of magic, so two two out of four albums bookend with with soundtracks of Flesh Gordon and a kind mm-hmm. of magic. So very very strange, but very good for us because we got the yeah we got the best of both worlds. We got to see the, the 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 movie and get the music attached to the visuals, which was awesome. So um, that is well, with the do advent it, of, of right? MTV and all oh, that kind of thing. It's not going to do it. You I know, thought that, we were they, done. Wait 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 wait. I thought we were no, done. We're but not Eric done yet. More? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just going to say, though, I think a lot of the stuff they were doing in, in, in the 70s, they were kind of, you know, preparing the paving that oh, yeah, way they were absolutely for, for, cutting for them to be able to to tie that in. The video stuff, definitely, they definitely uh, owned that that period, you know, yeah, so no, they were they able were, to do – on you the know. cutting edge of, of 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 new sounds, like I said, Bohemian Rhapsody was stuff that people had never heard before. So they were always on the cusp of of – always seemingly ahead of their time and and people would yeah. would then catch up to it and say oh wow that stuff is great and meanwhile it's like a couple of years already or people would la- would latch on to that stuff 
Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's almost like Queen had two periods. They had like the seventies period, which was a certain style and, and type of music or a certain feel. And then the eighties, what was something, it was a whole other, other animal onto itself in, in that like kind of, they were building, of albums. I think building their identity in the seventies. Yeah. There was a lot of that sort of the glam rock thing was still going on. They were, yep. they were, you know, they were competing. They were struggling with, with keeping in tune with that kind of stuff. And, but again, it was just always pushing those, those limits and, and, and kind of just, and I think with MTV, I definitely feel like they, if any band really sort of, MTV served the music and the and the band. It would be Queen. It was definitely their their time to shine in in that in that in that regard. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, and it's just. Uh, yeah, that's I mean, never say. That's it. <laughs> that's it for me. <laughs> Is it, are we out of water and tea? I think we're out of water I, and tea. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it, it's it, it's absolutely it, it falls probably almost smack close to smack dab in the middle of their discography. Maybe maybe a little bit later, but it, it's one of it's one of my favorites. It's it's a near and dear to mm-hmm. my heart album. Uh, part of mm-hmm. part of my musical yep. growing up, my musical adolescence, as it were. Um, so I'm I'm gonna. This is a high, highly recommended one. You can go on YouTube. You could check out the video that was banned. You could check out <laughs> I Want to Break Free and. and Oh my God, how controversial is it? You know, hopefully you won't get in an uproar and it won't upset you too much. Um, I think you can handle it. And then to go check, go check out their their Live Aid performance. Revisit it if you haven't looked at it in a while. Go go check out their Live Aid performance, and then you then check out the album that a lot of those tracks came from, which is the Works, which had no hits off it for the most part. But now Radio Gaga is kind of like a hit after the fact. It, it didn't do anything at the time, but now it's become much mm-hmm. beloved. Uh, but we loved it. We could say we knew it when. And we loved it way back when. So um, mm-hmm. that's going to do it. That's right for the uh, for the thirty three twenty four podcast. We appreciate your support as always. You can find us on social media, Instagram and Facebook. That's where we live. That's where we have the most amount of fun. We do some live shows on on Facebook every now and then. So definitely check it out. All you got to do it's really simple thirty three twenty four podcast. If you could type that. You can put it into Facebook and you can put it into Instagram. You'll get the same results. We'll be there. We'll be waiting for you. So definitely check us out. We appreciate it. Uh, For Eric, this has been Dean behind the microphone. And we will see you on the flip side. You've been listening to the 3324 podcast with Dean Legiro and Eric Cooper. You can find us on your favorite podcast provider. So please like, subscribe, and rate to become a part of the 3324 family. Your feedback is important, so make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook at 3324podcast and on Twitter at 3324p to join the conversation. 